thank you, Sheila. So today I'm going to talk about agents of change in climate smart villages. And my presentation will cover what the climate smart villages are, uh, what we do there, and how we collaborate with various local partners, and in our case, in particular, with Farmers Union. Throughout the talk, I'm also going to hit on a few things that we have learned throughout this process so far. So CCAPS started the Climate Smart Villages in 2011 in Southeast Asia, East and West Africa. The program was extended in 2014 to Latin America and Southeast Asia. So here we are now in Southeast Asia with six villages, three in Vietnam, two in Laos, and one in Cambodia. And this is the Climate Smart Village in Central Vietnam that's led by ICRAF that I will talk more about. In this village, we also have two other projects. One is about scaling climate smart agriculture practices and processes together with IIRR in Philippines and in Vietnam. And we have another one on agroclimate information systems that we do together with CARE International in Vietnam, Laos, and Cambodia. The climate smart villages were selected based on a number of criteria. So the site here is located, or all these six sites are located in areas that are highly exposed to climatic risks. The agroecosystem is representative for a larger area for the region. There are opportunities to scale the climate smart interventions. And there is an existing collaboration between local actors, villagers, and the leading agency, which in most of the cases is the CG center. And as I mentioned, in our case, we have an established collaboration with Vietnam Farmers Union. And finally, the partici should, participation should be voluntary. Besides Climate Smart as being the, the normal seeking the co-benefits among food security, adaptation, and mitigation, CCAPS also talks about more specific ways that intervention can be smart. So we talk about weather smart, carbon smart, energy smart, pest smart, water smart. And we also pay specific attention to the massive local knowledge in the villages, which we also refer to as knowledge smart. And finally, in Southeast Asia, being able to sell the products is a very important motivation for adopting new practices. So we also refer to market smart. What is new in Vietnam about climate smart agriculture is perhaps the landscape perspective. So if we think of the red circle here as being the climate smart village, we can see that there is no one landscape or one climate smart practice. It's a mosaic of different land uses. But still the technical staff and local planners usually think of interventions at the field scale. So by engaging them in land use and hazard mapping and modeling, we remind them that landscapes are connected through human activity, infrastructure, and gravity, and in our case, specifically water and soil interactions. And then, of course, these interventions should have an impact on the surrounding landscapes too, the, the ones that we do. So you may ask yourself, why are we talking about one village here? Well, in Vietnam, the administrative boundaries are the most effective unit for implementing interventions. The climate smart villages are test sites or sites for demonstrating examples of climate smart agriculture to extension, local governments, NGOs, and donors, so that they can take on these climate smart practices and scale out from there. Our team in the Climate Smart Village consists of a full-time community organizer, which is an ECRAF staff, and a part-time seconded staff from the Farmers Union. One of the reasons why we're working with Farmers Union is that they are able to reach farmers in almost all villages in the whole country. It's a kind of farmer's interest or civil society organization that provides agricultural advice, training, and loans, for example. Many of these tasks overlap with extension. Uh, so the farmer's union and the extension staff who work with us, they become knowledge brokers. They are like translators of local and scientific knowledge. And we expect that then that gradually they will take over and become the important agents for scaling of climate smart agriculture practices. So I will talk a little bit about what we do more specifically in, in terms of activities and the main partners that are involved in those activities that you can see here. 
for the social mobilization and climate smart agriculture awareness raising activities, we organized to start with a logo competition to engage school children and their parents. And then on women's, Vietnamese Women's Day, we together with the youth union, we organized a cooking competition for men in nine villages. This helped us to show that, first of all, men can safely take care of the household and send their women to training. And they also shows the diversity of vegetables and fruits that could be included in climate smart uh, interventions. There has been a number of field visit and learning exchange trips, and one of them went to the Philippines. Uh, our Climate Smart Village leader came back and had so many ideas. And one of these ideas was to start two school vegetable gardens to provide uh, the school children with lunch. Today, these kindergartens feed 500 children and they save about $400 per month by growing their own vegetables. And then, from a long list of 10 Climate Smart interventions that we derived in the beginning, the villagers prioritized four of them. These practices now involve about 70 households. So for these groups, we are testing also different forms of community innovation funds. The, the group starts with $2,500 in our case, and they can use them as they like, but the point, of course, is that they should try to return the money so that others can benefit for this. Of those four interventions, women in particular preferred home garden improvement and animal options. So we have a volunteer farmer who introduced vermiculture, which is used for chicken feed or fish feed, and then the manure, of course, for soil improvement. The men were more interested in forest enrichment, so we're going to introduce a nursery here to establish a more diverse forest deforestation. And there was a quite equal selection of, um, amongst women and men for intercropping and agroforestry. Uh, the intercropping was an interesting experience because when we started there, there was a cassava factory near the village. So almost all farmers were growing cassava. And then suddenly this factory was closed down and the farmers didn't know what to grow. That was a tremendous opportunity for us because we also learned from the El Nino last year. We had three months without rainfall. And we're anticipating this year could be another El Nino year, really hard one. So the farmers were very keen to test new drought tolerant crops. We are now testing sorghum, quinoa, and lentils. These are plants that has not been growing there before. Uh, and we are also working on the home gardens to train farmers on fruit tree management. Finally, we have the agroclimate information systems. Here we're working with seasonal forecasts and regular forecast updates. Uh, the, villager, the village has a weather station so they can monitor themselves the deviations from the central forecast that they see on TV. And before the season, the farmers make a participatory scenario plan, which builds on local knowledge and agriculture advice from the authorities. And then after the season, they will evaluate the plan and see how, they, how it went and what changes they could make for the next season. So finally, some lessons that we have learned here, I think, are that in the Climate Smart Village, we tend to focus on climate impacts. And there is a risk that we forget that markets and economics can change even faster than climate. Also, one of these Climate Smart, one Climate Smart uh, activity is not perhaps the solution to all climatic impacts. So we should also prioritize which of the climatic impacts we're aiming for in the first place. We should also be ready to see changes as an opportunity to test and experiment, have flexible alternatives that could be introduced step by step rather than changing everything at the same time, find low cost alternatives for those households who have less resources, and look for opportunities to ensure also that the landscape level benefits are accounted for in census statistics or in the INDC reports. Most importantly, though, without local ex uh, engagement, nothing can change. Village leaders and the local organizations are the most important agents of change. To engage the villagers, we also need to have some visible results early, even if we're aiming for long-term effects. And finally, to involve uh, policymakers. First of all, so they are aware of the activities we do, and so that they can improve changes in crops and they are able to link farmers and the new crops that farmers may grow with local markets or businesses. And finally, so they can also recommend policy changes.
accepte. 